So we're at the annual Terranalius breakfast in Dalesford, where we raise uh, a Terranalius banner across the town hall to call attention to the great lie of Terranalius that our this uh, nation state uh, sits on and um, the subsequent uh, grief and suffering that Indigenous people have had as a result of that legal term or that legal fiction. Good morning, Dalesford. Good morning, Laogombuk and Lani Baramo and our Maringa Kuli Murup. It's always a pleasure coming to this part of Jara country. I thank you for inviting me today. There are many ways people can acknowledge can celebrate, can reflect on this day. And it really feels right being invited to an event like this as a Jara woman on my country, by the people who live here on my country, part of my community, who want to share and celebrate in Jara culture. And in this beautiful country, this country is like no other. In my mother tongue, the language of this Jandak, this country, this is the words of country. This language comes from nowhere, nowhere else in the world. It's the language that the birds speak it's the language that the trees speak. It's just the human form of it. So I say, Gundelka Yajara, are you well today? Yaringek Rebecca, Dada Wurunduri, Kukuruk, Gilpo Morning, Yinamen, Caroline Malcolm, Dada Wurung Daramang, Wartukangalang, Gundi, Nulambara, Juima, Baringanda, Gawang, Yangang, Yalakang, Bulichang, Juima, Baringanda. So, my name is Rebecca, and I'm a Jaja Wurung woman. My bloodline is through the Malcolm family line, Caroline Malcolm and her parents, Gilpo Morning and Ginneman, and they all spent time here on Franklin Ford a place where my people were herded into so that our land could be colonised. And while it served its purpose, it wasn't great. Parker, who was the mission manager there, allowed our people to, to hunt and gather. And that's because they didn't get much money. And it was good for um, the people you're minding to be able to kind of feed themselves. He allowed some ceremonies to happen. He allowed us to speak our language and that's a lot better than what happened on other missions. It still failed. It wasn't good and people left. Um, and my great, great, great grandmother, Caroline, who I acknowledge as our matriarch, such a strong woman, without her strength and resilience, endurance, persistence. I wouldn't be here. I wouldn't be here speaking my language to you, sharing the pride of my culture, having pride in my ancestry, sharing my culture with my daughter, continuing it on. And of course, sharing it with you, keeping our country strong, keeping these values of our ancestors here and present with us. This is what being Australian is to me. 
It is where we still love and appreciate this country and it is on equal par with us. It is not subservient. We must find a way to live with it without impacting on its health and its own survival. We have failed. We have failed with too much foreign values coming in here and not enough integration of Indigenous values, of Jara values here. We are moving forward. We are bringing back balance. From the time of Caroline Malcolm to the time of my mother, growing up in Campbell's Creek here, sitting on the floor. All the other kids had desks and quills. Well, the black kids were told to sit on the floor, had chalk and blackboards. They weren't allowed to play on the playgrounds with the other kids. They had one tap and one toilet and one play area. They were not allowed to mingle. Last year, I went with my cousin to that same school and did a cross-cultural awareness for the teachers. That's a big change in one generation. We can make big changes, all of us, for the future generations, and I want to acknowledge them here today. You've got a big load to carry, and we're going to try and lessen that load for you. We're going to help guide you on that way. And we're going to leave this country and wherever you may have come from, in far better condition than we found it. That is our responsibility. And we share that. I want, to, um, I want to share a poem I wrote with you today. I wrote it many years ago. And it's kind of just been sitting with me. I'll share a yarn about our Australian nation. It's been bound with questionable information history told with biased manipulation and inequality seeded in our foundation. This country, Australia, is beautiful that we live in. I'm just thankful to be classed as a citizen because my mum, she wasn't always one counted in, classed as flora and fauna until the age 14. So this made me question a lot of things, like why are Australian values so conflicting? Some people welcome the truth, they're not resisting, but why are there century-old views still existing? They say this country was Captain Cook's discovery. With over 500 nations here, how blind was he? He wrote plenty about a people that he didn't see and evaded British ownership legally with it, without a treaty. The most ridiculous lie that history's told us, no Aborigines here, was all terra nullius. Teaching this in schools is more than just a little sus. Science has proven human life here is 60,000 plus. I'm gonna start with the myths and the lies, the seeds of racism planted in disguise. Consider that history wasn't written from both sides. This is shared with good intent that our ignorance dies. Our version of history got lost in translation, paving the way for some misguided patriotism. Misinformation has plagued our education, reconfirming ill truths about our colonisation. No more denial, ancestral land was never given. The men seeking to conquer it, by greed they were driven. Colonial war tactics used on us will sicken. So it was concealed from the masses and history was rewritten. Colonial amnesia didn't credit all their black guides who were leading these heroes across ancient song lines. Unbeknown that it would lead to countless street signs, exploiting black people was noble back in those times. Our shared history is not something we can ignore. You can find out the truth if it's simply sought for. In frontier battles, our country was fiercely fought for, historically underplayed. It was Australia's first war. In Van Diemen's land, murder was hardcore. In 1836, it was declared martial law. They paid five shillings for any black killings. Public extermination was openly exercised. Two shillings per piccaninny, dead or alive. White privilege deemed us unworthy of our share. Race-based murders, dismissed without a care. A massacre here, a massacre there. This was the way to advance Australia fair? 
Then there was smallpox, which it was no accident, stealing lives like a bandit. In our clans, it run rampant. It was planned so that we would contract it. It was intentionally dispatched on the blankets. Then there's the policy of white assimilation, forcing us to change our true form of creation. This is the basis of continued aggravation, frustration tracking down our displaced relations. Forced onto the mission, language and culture forbidden, wishing for better conditions and human rights to be given, in fear they were living for the kids had to be hidden from the kidnapping done by government cars that got driven. The ongoing saga of our people's exploitation is being the world's archaeological sensation, all in the name of scientific examination, blocking our rights for ancestral repatriation. Where is the pride in a dishonourable past? To say, this is just what happens to your colour, your caste? To believe without white help, our race wouldn't last. Those with these views seek the past to be masked. Acknowledgement, it should not be just spoken. We know there's been attempts, but we're sick of being token. It was our people, not our connection that got broken. Until we close the gap, it's just your ego we've stroken. Get over it. It's in the past, you say, while our statistic ill health continues to decay from the unhealed wounds of only yesterday into generational struggles. We're betrothed this way. Half caste, quarter caste, don't categorise us. Our culture can't be measured by the measuring glass. Please move on, catch up. That shit is in the past. We can't be judged by our skin pigmentation. Spirituality is not one colour or vibration. Our identity is not up for cross-examination because each of us are made to express all of creation. So the reason for this yarn and all the words stirring is to acknowledge it happened and stop it reoccurring. Cease spreading the lies our shared history is referring and help you navigate through all the truth blurring. Our nation starts to heal when we begin to clear the air. Let's right the past wrongs. Speak the truth if you care. We can grow in respect for this country we share and walk the talk of those words. Advance Australia fair. Dogs liked it. <laughs> um, well, thank you for listening. I'd like to acknowledge my ancestors, all my Jara people today, my elders, and all of you. And thank you for having me at this event. I'll just share a quick song uh, before I close. Um, and it's a song that I wrote for the next generations about how the way forward is for us is to listen to our living mother country, to listen to Bunjo's law, for our mobs to walk and talk together and to teach the next ones coming, the Gaia. It's about singing our country strong, growing the children strong. That's the basic translation. <clears throat> Jinga la ja palich, 
tuanu ini anu maringa kulimor. My ancestors and my country will return to you. Thank you for uh, today. I look forward to sharing some breakfast with you and um, and hearing from you. Thanks again for organising. Thanks for listening and uh, turning up to something meaningful today. Yeah, it's really meaningful for me too, so thank you. Hello, everyone. You know, this is, um, that was pretty good what Beck said, you know, it sort of left me a bit speechless. Um, yeah, I'm a local, I live in Dalesford for a long time, and I forgot this was on today, you know. I was feeling a bit sad, you know, because there's no march on in the city, and I don't know why there's no march on in the city. You know, it's pretty, not very good performance, you know. I don't think, no matter, we have this covert thing and all that, you know, but we're still marching, we're still going down the beach, we're still swimming, we're still camping, we're all going, doing everything out in this, but there's no march in the city. It's invasion day, you know, and it's, it's pretty disgusting, I reckon. You know, and um, yeah, it hurts, you know, sort of to have something so significant, you know. Even NATO March this year, you know, I was pretty shocked that that didn't happen either, you know. It's um, there's no reason why it shouldn't have happened, you know. Well, you have a movement, then we have this government, you know, and the government tries to do the right thing, but you can't. <sighs> force Aboriginal people not to march in the protest. You know, when there's no treaty being done, they reckon we come under the Health Act, you know, we're not even included in the Victorian state constitution yet. I'm a Gundish Jamara man and come from the Western District and we're not even included in the Victorian constitution. So I don't know how to, they're making laws for us Aboriginal people not to march when we still uphold sovereignty. You know, I'm in Gundish Jamara I have this other job at the moment, working local, bushfire recovery, but I have this other job before that as, as negotiations to Gunish Tamara people to see what we want from treaty. Now, we're having that negotiations going on, going on. How come we aren't marching? You know, we're having a negotiations, right, build up with the Andrews government, the present premier in state, charge right, for the future treaty of the future generations and for all generations and for all people and for the long time future, but nothing's going forward. You know, so it's a bit disheartening to have all this in play. And I watched a video this morning with Lydia Thorpe in it, you know, and she's saying in the Greens Party we're getting 250 million to move forward, sort out a treaty over the next 10 years. And we have all these things in place. So doesn't make sense to me why mob ain't marching. You know, it's a, it's a protest, it's a march, it's a way of bringing all of Melbourne together, you know, and, and people feel lost and want to belong to something, and it's a way, it's a good community, you know, gathering to go down the city. Like, people are ringing me this morning at six o'clock, oh, what time's the march start? And I'm looking everywhere and I'm thinking, I don't think it's on. So when I come to realisation that eight o'clock there was no march in the city, so then I was at home and we saying to the daughter, I don't know what to do today, and she said, Oh, haven't I got that thing up the town hall in Dallas? Oh yeah, Patrick and what Patrick and Meg do? Yeah, the Terranalis breakfast, and I thought, yeah, I wonder up to that and see, you know. But it's nice for you, Mob, to come out and. Um, recognise this special occasion, this special day. You know, it's turned out a beautiful day. You know, it's, um, yeah, I usually do a moment of silence, you know, but back, back covered it all, so a bit speechless, yeah, but I'm just gutted about there's no march and I just say at this, 
Because we're coming under health act, didn't it, you know? So this whole COVID thing's happening from the act of 215, you know? But Aboriginal people, if you read the Victorian State Constitution was drawn up in 1854, wasn't passed in 1975 until the Whitman government. So Victoria never had a state constitution, what's that? For 121 years with no amendments to the Aboriginal race. You know, this is your law. You know, so how do they stop mob from marching? We're not in the constitution. And didn't we have this massive when we're gonna have a vote on the um federal constitution to include the Aboriginal people? Wasn't that going through a censorship about five or six years ago? It was mad, but they were pushing all this agenda and that hasn't been through. So, you know. But we can't do nothing unless like, we only a small number and we only left. I'm a descendant from the Massacres, you know, from our own history, different. But we can't do it without you guys, you know. We need you guys to help us, you know. Because we were like 100%, but now we're only 2.2%. We've gone from 100% to point, not 1%, you know, not 10%, you know, 2%. So people say, oh, where's them black fellas going? And they say, oh, they're going over the hill. And so people come in, no guns for no black fellas living here. I said, where are they going? I said, oh, they're going over that hill. But there's none. They didn't make it over the hill, you know, before they got shot. So we're only a small minority, so, you know, we're doing our best, you know, but we need you guys to help us. You know? yeah. Anyway, Thanks. hope you have a great day and... I like to um yes say hello to the person sex standing next to you, right? Because we stand in places and we don't recognise, we don't know, I don't know half the people here. But there's a token of friendship, you know, we're not having a march. You should turn to each other and greet the person standing next to you. Shake their hand, say hello. Come on. Say hello to the person next to you. Give them a cuddle. You know? Anyway, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. I'd like to acknowledge Rebecca and, and Uncle Dale. Thank you both for sharing knowledge, country and culture. I'm a Wiradjuri woman, so I'm not on my country right now, so I come as a guest. And as a guest, I pay my respect to traditional owners of this country and I pay my respect to their law. And I pay my respect to the sovereignty that has not been ceded and language that remains strong in spite of deliberate and intentional genocide. This morning, I was part of the day of mourning, the dawn service, and this is now my home. And so I sought permission to bring a little bit of that service back to share with my community. So part of the dawn service is acknowledging that 1,168 men, women and children were murdered as part of the frontier wars. Murdered. They didn't pass, we didn't lose them, they were murdered. And those 1,168 are the ones that have gone through academic rigour and we know have been proven. So my only little bit today is to remember and to honour and to acknowledge those lives lost so as we, me as an Aboriginal woman, can still stand on country. Just looking at all you beautiful people already there. Yamagara Ninda, Mitchell Burney, Gamilaro Kumi Merilwari, 
Berk, New South Wales. I'm just going to play some Yiddiki because I know I've got some words as well, but I prefer sharing my breath with you and giving you good vibrations. So, to all the fallen ones before us and all the ones struggling today, this is for you and on you.
Thank you so much, Mitch. Thank you, Dale. And thank you, Beck. Um, I'd like to acknowledge uh, all First Peoples here today and to pay my respects to the ancestors on this land, from this land, the spirit of which resides in this land, the ancestors of the trees the animals, the people, the microbes, the water, the rocks, all the ancestors of the country that makes this Jarra mother country. This is our sixth year doing the Terranalius breakfast. We started with, I think, about 12 of us sitting on the, the, uh, the steps and raising the, the banner and each year it's grown, and each year we, it's, it very much started as white fella sorry business for us to claim our history. And as the years have gone on, uh, I think we've created a, a, a place where first people can come and feel accepted and, and be seen and heard by us. Uh, my personal journey into this country is through understanding the trauma that my ancestors brought to this country as both convicts and as settlers. I go way back to the beginning on my, some of my ancestry. And then looking at the last several hundred years where my peasant people were indigenous in England and Scotland and Ireland and Wales and Germany and France. And looking at that history that in England started in the 1200s where the feudal lords started dispossessing peasants from land, started making commons inaccessible. And if we are to understand the suffering of Aboriginal people we have to look into the suffering of our own people, but also fess up to we were the dispossessed that became the dispossessors. And that, that takes a lot of courage to stand in that space, but it also moves us past the unproductive shame of white guilt, which is a really big problem in our culture. It stops us from engaging with indigenous people. It stops us from building relationships to country. It holds us in this politically correct white guilt. And my understanding of Jarrah country has come through people like Beck, has come through people like Dale, has come through listening to indigenous cosmology, listening to indigenous story, and then starting to, to hear and work out my own ancestral stories and see that they're actually very complementary before we became uh, a kind of modern subjects of capital. And so my peasant ancestors lost the sacred bond to their ancestral land. And when people lose that sacredness, when people lose a kinship and, and connection and custodial duty to land, we can become any floating ghost that is extremely destructive into whatever culture we drop into. And so this day is indigenous and non-indigenous storytelling. It's coming together to tell the story of trauma, the story of subjugation, the story of control, but the story of resilience, resistance, renewal of culture. And that's what this 
moment is about in our uh, community. And, and I'd like to uh, open um, the floor to any second peoples. Uh, and if there are first peoples who haven't spoken who would like to speak, please come forward uh, first. But if there is uh, anyone else that would like to speak about this day and what it means to them, um, please come forward. I'd also like to acknowledge um, Jen Bray, who's the Deputy Mayor. Um, and Jen uh, has really been holding, uh, being a, a really great agent uh, in this time of segregation and medical apartheid, which is what I would call it. I'm sure others would call it something else, if not that, if not anything. But um, yeah, so I'd just like to thank Jen for her work. But I'm so pleased that we all can meet here on this day, regardless of where we've arrived at this pandemic, we can come together as community and, and, sta and stand together and maybe also make some reflections about what segregation politics does to people. Rebecca, thank you for welcoming us so beautifully and movingly to this beautiful Jaya country that I acknowledge that we are privileged to be living on today. And I really appreciate your amazing poem, rap. <laughs> I'd love to hear it with a backbeat <laughs> and the ditch. Um, such powerful truth telling. Thank you for that gift today. Thank you. I'm, my name is Jen Bray. I'm a local community member, a mother, a teacher, and also a counsellor. And it's a great privilege to be here today to share this very moving sharing of acknowledgement of the history of pain and the courage and the resilience and the strength that is needed to move through this to the place we want to be, where we can connect, we can share, we can acknowledge and we can heal the country and we can heal our relationships with each other. And often I, I get dis discouraged or exhausted from the fight, from the battles that we're all facing to try and do things better. And I wonder sometimes how I'm going to find the strength to do the next thing, to go the next way. And listening to the dig today, feeling the earth, feeling that vibration, the rhythm, the sounds, the healing sounds, it reminds me that it's from the earth where we will get our strength, from this beautiful country. I do want to acknowledge the amazing work of Donna Spiller. I, I, I really would love to throw to Donna now because I think she's worked so hard in our community. Um, I'll just, I might just um, share a reflection I had on the way here. It was really about the flag and a few years ago I rang Justice Nelson, Jara Woman and said how would you feel about the Aboriginal flag being lowered for January 26? And her response was very simple. Everybody knows that a flag lowered represents mourning. And that's what today is for her and for many Aboriginal people. It took the following year to make it happen, but I want to acknowledge that Council did that. It goes against federal government flag protocols, but it happened, and I think that's a, a, an important step forward to acknowledging today as a day of mourning. Um, and I was thinking about that driving in. She posted yesterday a beautiful photo of Uncle Brian with the flag, acknowledging the work of elders before her, um, her, her own father, who has since passed, um, and acknowledging the work that's been done under that representation of the flag, the battles fought, the celebrations won. It means so much to her, I know, that the flag is freed. And I reflected on something that Uncle Brian said to me as a young woman, and for him, the red on the flag represents the bloodshed on these lands. And I guess for me, that's why the opening of the Frontier Wars Memorial out on Jarra country was so important that on his country I could acknowledge that bloodshed. 
in this on these lands. So if you haven't been out to, you know, just pay a reflection, it's a beautiful um, site, the beautiful manor gums, the signs all in language and then translated into English. The Jara is the principal language, the first language, not the second. And just another note, um, Uncle Rick today is holding the first survival day event at Castle Main and Victory Park at 12 o'clock. A few bands playing, women's cleansing, starting with the women's cleansing, some ditch. So if you can drop over and support Uncle Rick and the community there, that would be great. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Um, I just felt the need to share a bit more if I haven't shared too much already. Um, I know it's hot, so I'll keep it brief, but I just wanted to acknowledge um, that I am Macedonian and English Australian on my father's side. I'm proud of this history as well. Um, my Macedonian Australian family have always respected my mum uh, being an Aboriginal woman. Um, they were quite proud to know an Aboriginal person and have them in their family. So I feel quite blessed to have grown up knowing a balanced version of history, hearing my mum's horrible upbringing, knowing my dad's upbringing as a first, um, first generation Australian, and knowing my granddad's story of coming to Australia from Macedonia and meeting my English grandmother, who took him in, who, was, who loved his Macedonian culture, embraced it. I grew up dancing at the Macedonian picnics as well as my culture. This is the Australian part of me. I must first acknowledge my Aboriginal roots though and respect them. And maybe I don't know my Macedonian language, but it's safe in Macedonia. I'm putting my time into learning the mother tongue here. Um, I just wanted to share this because we're all multicultural here and being Australian is what you make it. And I, I hope that we can find respect together moving, moving on forward. And that comes with doing a few things that I mentioned in my poem. Acknowledging the past, no denial, just acknowledge it happened, acknowledge it was dishonourable. And, you know, hearing you talk about um, white guilt and shame, um, this might be ironic, but I feel like I need to say, get over it. <laughs> because it is, it's stopping us coming together. Yeah. And, you know, to have people say that, well, you just get over it like it was 200 years ago. No, it was only 50 years ago that it, and it still hasn't stopped the discrimination here. So yeah, we need to get over that so we can come together. Um, and that's gonna be your journeys. And for me, I call this survival day because for me, this is when we really had to start surviving. Um, and, and it's, uh, a balance, I feel. So um, may we reflect, may we grow each survival day and uh, share our culture and evolve Australian culture and identity to align more with the First Peoples. And uh, yeah, let's have a good feed. Thank you again. I just wanted to say that. So Thank you so much for everyone making uh, 2022 a very special and memorable Terra Nullius. Um, I just want to say that my uh, trajectory from what I call unproductive shame and unproductive guilt to really understand how to get to creative shame and creative guilt, and that's the, the genesis of the Terra Nullius breakfast, is moving from that, that stasis or that, that um, inability to move to, to movement and creativity uh, to create this. And, and to rather than go and pester Jarrah people and First Nations people, actually to start this work ourselves. Let's, let's build the culture so that we can then welcome First People into our lives and learn 
from first people. And also recognizing we all have first people in our ancestors that we can learn from as well. Even those who are very deeply traumatized and very violent, they're the shadow world in us. A lot of our ancestors did some really terrible things and, and we have to stand in that and we have to work out what right relationship is on this country. And that is a constant relationship with country and with people. And that's what I'm, I feel like I've embarked a little step or two into that space. Um, so, and I feel like we're doing this collectively. We're stepping into that space of right relationship and, and listening to that sort of language that first people elders are bestowing to us, are gifting to us. So thank you to first people for holding this country sacred, for, for holding country sacred. I mean, really knowing that country is sacred and not a thing to be extracted, which is what our second people economic system is completely based on. Extract, what can we take? What can we take? Well, we need rituals of return. Uh, on the note of making rituals of return, uh, thank you to everybody who has given uh, produce from their gardens and some uh, money. Uh, this is for you guys, Beth. Beautiful.